Hi, this is Tony at Cover Magazine. I'm speaking to Karina Thompson, Manager for Complex Claims at MUA. Karina, thank you very much for talking to me today. Thanks, Tony. Thanks for having me. Great. Karina, first of all, let me just ask you about complex claims. Aren't all claims complex? <laughs> Yes, I suppose to a degree there's there's grey areas in all of them if you really go look for them. Um, uh, yeah, so it basically consists of two portions. Uh, sometimes, you know, the, the quantum of the claim being very being high and then obviously the complex because a, a, a big claim isn't necessarily a, com a complex claim and vice versa. You can have small claims with, you know, a lot of technicalities. Um, so yeah, so that, that's why also the buildings of the legal portfolio fall under me. So, if, so when those technicalities in grey areas arise, I try to sort them out as much as possible. Ah, okay, okay. So the buck stops with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, luckily not entirely, okay. but <laughs> a lot of bugs yes. has to pass through me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, brilliant. Now, um, Karina, the um, the subject for our chat today is. Um, basically, just giving a little bit of a heads up to brokers and that sort of thing. Um, we're going into the festive season and we know that it's not just Joe Soap that is um, out Christmas shopping. We also have uh, criminal elements that will be going Christmas shopping over this period of time. And they see sort of uh, um, great pickings because People have bought new stuff with their bonuses. People are going on holidays, leaving their homes open. People are flocking to um, social places where they're walking around with cameras and expensive phones, all of those sort of things. So maybe from your experience, you can just sort of give us a few of the, the issues that you normally come across and some of the thoughts on how do we mitigate those risks. All right. Tony, yeah, I think um, and it, it's horrible to think that, you know, you want to wind down the year and you want to take a break and you still have to be vigilant and wound up to to make sure that you're mitigating risk in the meanwhile. So, yeah, unfortunately, while even though you are there to relax and, and you know, have a, have a good time and, you know, take a break from the end of the year, uh, you know, it's obviously just important to always be vigilant. Um, don't let your guard down unnecessarily. I think as a South Africans are um, more aware than probably what the average, as you said, Joe Sub would be. So I think to a, to a big degree, people are already being, um, you know, careful. But don't never underestimate, um, you know, the paying attention to detail. If you see somebody, you know, suspicious behind you, or just make sure that you conceal your items, keep them close, don't you know leave your stuff unattended it's it's really the logic basic things but that we tend to neglect when we are in a social environment or a holiday environment but unfortunately you just have to give yourself that constant reminder to be vigilant and careful and just stop a second and think but what if this might happen or what if i know you know some you drive yourself crazy thinking about every eventuality but really just the the, in broad spectrum, just always be vigilant and careful to, you know, to be preventative rather than, you know, being sorry later on. Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. I know it sounds, you know, very obvious, but that is really just the the crux of it. That's exactly, yeah. So um, over this period of time, uh, are there any specific trends that you're seeing that are different from the norm during the year? As you said, the, the frequency of it, obviously, increases um with as you say people have more money to spend now this week being black friday people spend money they don't have on things they don't need but yeah that's also then for the for the crooks to know people or you know they bought more things for christmas or you know festive time specials or whatever the case may be or that they're not at home so yeah unfortunately the frequency on crime related uh, incidents are on the increase this, you know, more so this time of year than, than anywhere else because it's just, or sorry, for another time in the year because it, it's just, you know, a combination of more favourable, let's call it, factors for the, for the criminals that the loot is just going to be so much bigger and so much easier to take, the circumstances being what it is this time of year. 
Yeah, yeah. And and then specifically when it comes to um, sort of road related incidences, not necessarily crime um, in terms of safety on the roads. Are there any specific issues there that you normally pick up over festive seasons in terms of um, uh, road related? Well, I suppose crime as well as accidents. Yeah, I think if we um, just sorry, before we go to the roads and as you mentioned now, um, not necessarily criminal elements, but also just leaving your home unattended in general. When I when you presented the topics, I um, I also just thought you know there's really a lot of risk mitigation that that people can also do, um, not necessarily from a security standpoint, but also just in general to mitigate risks. And I mean that relates to um, if you. You know, rather get a house sitter than just having your security updated. Because if this, if your house is uh, with mitigating risk, obviously the best case scenario would be to avoid that risk as far as possible. So if you don't need to leave your house unattended, rather get a house sitter or a neighbour or somebody that can stop by to break that perception that it is unattended. Also, if there's, and as I said, not this because of the security benefits of that are obvious, you know, there is somebody at home, there is somebody who can press the panic button or arm the alarm. But also, apart from the criminal element of it, if there's a burst geyser or a pipe, or, you know, water damage of whatever nature that we saw now with the rains or a fire breaks out, you know, if there is somebody in attendance, immediate action can be taken. You don't have to wait for the neighbours to see smoke and call the fire brigade. So, Really, if if you do have the the option or the possibility to rather get somebody to look after your house, that's obviously first price. Mm -hmm. And also to the people looking after your house, again back to the security part of it, you know, make it look like everyday activities going on. Switch the lights on and off. Don't leave the bin outside. Take the mail out of the mailbox. Um, you know, so that it seems like like day to day living as as usual. And also just very important on the leaving the property unattended okay. is also just to double check your security measures. Find your alarm company, test, or don't even give them a heads up, test the alarm. But yeah. press the panic button. Make sure that they have the, that they call the correct numbers. Make sure that they call you. And if they don't say, listen, I triggered my alarm, why did you phone me? Or give them an alternative contact number if you're going to be out of the country or what. So, so that before you leave, you, you take that measures with your security service providers as well, proactively, and not just assume, well, I gave them my number two years ago, they still have it. Um, you know, to make sure that those details are up to date and your contract with them is up to date and still includes armed response or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. But yeah, getting us to the roads. Um, Volumes are obviously, you know, by the sheer volume of more cars on the road, the odds of something happening is, you know, by necessarily bigger. Obviously, people are in a hurry to get where they are. They are tired. They drive too long distances. They don't switch users. So really, you again, being vigilant, really have to think for everybody on the road. Um, also, again, being preventative, as I mentioned now, with the security measures, you know, making sure that your own response is active. Make sure that you have the emergency contact numbers on your phone. None of us travel with policy documents or reference numbers that they don't use on a daily basis. But maybe just have your broker's contact details, your policy number, the roadside assist number. Make sure that you have, have that on your phone because you never know where you might break down. You might not have um, internet connection to look up a roadside assist at the moment or you know where you are you might just have a cell phone signal so make sure that you arm yourself with that information before you go rather than have to oh i'm broken down next to the road now now i must you know look for it so that obviously helps again logic of checking your car making sure it's safe that if you break down somewhere that you have everything well at least to the most extent with you to be able to change a tire well as i said that's that's my basics for the rest of it, there's the risks, of course, of um, you know, party goers, you being a party goer yourself, mm. you know, getting into trouble there. Obviously, you'd rather make use of self drive, self drive services or apps, or avoid being on the road on, on, at the dangerous times. Also, obviously, helps if you're not, you know, driving in the middle of the night or, 
you know, especially considering where, where you're driving at the moment. Mm -hmm. That would also obviously make a difference of, of the preventative measures that you have to take. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, I mean, you you um, alluded when we started the conversation already that you're quite busy due to some weather related events that recently happened um, in in um, the country, especially this last um, hailstorm earlier, Cape uh, floods, etc. So yeah. there's a whole bunch of risks to um, contend with, and it's a good opportunity for brokers to communicate and interact with their clients to build a bit of trust in terms of um, the, you know, um, caring for their security and safety, etc. But at the same time, protecting um, the the books from um, yes. too much, too many claims and too high claims. Yeah, in, in that sense, you know, a, a technicality can trip you up, even though you think, yeah, I'm buying my premium, everything is fine, I'm covered. But now, for example, you're a family of four, um, with, let's say, adult children, you're taking a long trip up to Namibia or whatever the case may be, but maybe the vehicle in question has a driver restriction on it. Now mm. you ask your someone in your family to drive while they're driving the vehicle, there's an accident. Look, and I'm, I'm oversimplifying now. There's, again, a lot of complexities that might change the, mm. you know, the circumstances of the, the claim as it happens, but, but things like that. Or your children wants to borrow your four by four to go on the trip, but you're not going with. But there's a driver restriction on the policy, and in your mind, you think, but he's a licensed driver and he has my permission. So just familiarise yourself, or as a broker, familiarise your clients with: Are you using this vehicle to go to, you know, on holiday? This, you know, just take note: This is that these are there are restrictions of cover on it in certain mm -hmm. instances, or you know. Little things like that can can lead to a, a big issue later down the line. Yeah, it wasn't yeah maybe um, draw up a, a sort of a checklist for clients that you provide to them so that they can check if any of the things are relevant to them and what they should be doing about that. Yes. Um, yeah. Brilliant. Karina, thank you so much for chatting to me and um, yeah, taking some time out of your busy day. I hope this... Um, is the last weather related issues for the year <laughs> and that things calm down from you. Thank you, Tony. At least for this year, yes, we'll we'll have strength again next year. But I think the whole industry was really reading this year again from yeah. from natural disaster, natural incidents. So yeah. But thank you. We mm. we hope and trust it will calm down now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Karina.